Hey guys, this is Preetham back at you with some more interesting stuff. I know we generally keep doing maths, but hey, today a friend of mine reached out to me to try and solve this physics FRQ, and that's because it's got differential equation in it, and he just doesn't like him. So I just thought, alright, I'm going to be a good friend and go ahead and just solve this for him, and let's get started. So as you can see, it's from the AP Physics C Mechanics exam in 2013. Oh yeah, you can look it up if you want to, but I'm about to be solving it right now. So let's just pick a pen and go. A box of mass M, initially at rest, alright, that's a key word, I like that. And a constant applied force, FA, and then we got a subject to a drag force. So here, we, there's... The dot represents the box, drawn label the forces, alright. If you don't know already, this, this kind of illustration in physics is called a free body diagram. So we are about to draw the free body diagram with all the forces that act on the box. So as I know, it's got mass M, so it's there's supposed to be a weight force that's directed straight downward. That is the force, MG. That is the weight, the force of gravity. Forgive me for writing with a mouse, but then, hey, that's the best I got right now. Excuse my handwriting, alright? My penmanship isn't great either. And now we got an equal magnitude vector that points upwards, and that's the normal force, Fn. And like like, like the figure shows, we got a an, an applied force to the right. That's Fa. Whoops, look at that vector. I don't like it at all. Alright, that's better. F. A. And now, we have a drag force that's directed towards the left, and that's K V, where K is a just a set of constants, and V is the velocity of the block. That sounds good. Now, let's move on to part B. Right, but do not solve a differential equation. That could be used to determine the speed we all right. To write a differential equation, the first thing I'm about to do is write a sum of forces equation. And as I know, my net force, F net, is equal to MA. For those of you who haven't noticed already, I am typing on the side of my laptop right there in the highlighted range. I'll just make that a little bigger for the convenience of everyone. So let's just increase the font size to, oh crap, that's just 11. So let me just make that 18. Oh, there we go. So now, since I've increased the font, font size, it should be a little easier to see. Alt and EI to insert an equation right now. Oh no. Actually, we're good at 11. We don't need no 18s. So I'm just going to zoom in right there. Fnet is MA. And now, as I know, there is no force in the vertical direction because both the forces cancel out in the y direction. And in the x direction, I got two opposing forces. So, F net, that is MA, Alton EI, yes, MA equals F applied minus KV. That's the drag force. And now, a differential equation is nothing but an equation with a derivative in it, so I am just going to redefine acceleration as the first derivative of velocity with respect to time. Well, I could also do the first, uh, the second derivative of position with respect to time, but that does not serve my purpose right here because I am looking for the velocity. Now, substituting everything into it, we get m dv over dt equals f a force applied minus k v. There's part A. There's part B, excuse me. And now, moving on to part C. It says, determine the magnitude of the ter terminal velocity of the box. So at terminal velocity, there would be zero acceleration, which means no net force. So F net equals MA equals zero at a terminal velocity. So now, we are just going to set this equal to zero equals F A minus K V T. And on the AP exam, please do make a note that at terminal velocity, acceleration equals zero. So now, I have to solve for the variable Vt, if that was not obvious already. So I'm about to just swap sides of the equation, where k, v, oh, whoops, the wrong v. Don't do that on the exam, they about to ding you hard. Alright, a. 
And now, just to find the terminal of Vt, I just got to divide by k or transpose k to the other side. So that is just going to be Vt, the terminal velocity. Whoops, wrong we again. Please don't do that on the exam. Was f a over k. Yep, that's the terminal velocity. Now, moving on to part D. Let's go. This is the hard part of this. Use the differential equation from part B to derive the equation for the speed. We have the box as a function of time t, and v is 0, and t starts at 0. That's useful information to know because they're my initial conditions, although I am not going to need them because I'm going to solve them in definite integrals. We're no more in BC Calc where we just find the constants of integration of the value of c because this is physics you integrate the real, real life quantities oh no one note got its numbering wrong that's weird never seen that happen before oh what's happening today alright let's move back and now we're good yep don't mind the eye to likes so the first thing you gotta do when you have a differential equation is you separate your variables so I am about to do that right now, mdv equals f applied minus the drag force dt. So now I'm just about to bring the term with the v onto the side with the dv and m to the other side because it, it wouldn't kill me to just get a constant on the other side. So dv over force applied minus drag force. That's the difference of them both, and there is tt over m. Yep, that's our differential equation that we got to solve right now, but the first thing, let's just do a u substitution to just not make everyone else look stupid. Or just kidding, no one is stupid. A u substitution is pretty useful because it kind of tells you where you're headed and you know what you're doing. So a u substitution is the force applied minus kv. Sometimes u substitution does make life easier, so I wouldn't argue that. And here, let's insert our equation again. Whoops, this one's quite a ride. And the derivative of u would be negative k dv. And now, we gotta change the limits, of course, because I know that this this starts at, at 0 and ends at a time v, but I'm just about to just change the limits for now. And yeah, before that, I'm about to de define dv in terms of du, negative du over k. So yeah, we're good right there. And now, we gotta just insert the integral. Insert equation, new equation. Oh, it was a lot faster with the keyboard, not gonna lie. Alright, that's the first integral right there. And now we got dv, right? That's we. And now we got a uh, 0. And we just got dv over f applied minus the drag force, which would be equal to just another integral right there. And we got 0, that's a t, the upper limit's t, and now we got dt over m. So, yep, now let's change the limits. Because they do matter because you're representing two different quantities if you don't change the limits. So, yeah, u equals when when we is 0, u is just the applied force because k times 0 is still 0. And now, let's find the upper limit, which is when the velocity is we, so that's just our whole u right there. Now, let's just copy that integral over so that we can change the limits. Oh, God. Come on, come on, be nicer, we're running out of time. Just kidding, we're not. We have the whole night, evening, wherever you are. Depending on wherever you are, of course. Now, F A minus K V, that, and that is, oh no, come on, we can't be doing that. That is just the applied force, right there. So this part is gonna be a DU, and the denominator is just gonna be one fat U. And now we gotta remember what du was. It was negative 1 over k times dv. dv was just ne negative du over k, so we gotta account for the negative outside right there. Now, this might not look familiar, but anytime you see an integral of a, a term with the same ter 
a du with a u at the bottom, that's a natural log. Just know it's a natural log. Natural log of the force of applied force minus the drag force subtracted with the just the just the applied force equals negative kt over m. Now, if that wasn't obvious already, I just transpose the k to the other side, and now I'm about to redefine this natural log as a difference to as just one natural log with two fractions. So let's let's get started. So that's F applied. That's the applied force minus the drag force divided by the applied force. Let's go. And that would be equal to negative KT over M. Excuse the period. Now let's just simplify that. So that would be one minus the drag force over the applied force being equal to E raised to negative KT over M. And now, we got to solve for we, so what I got to do is just do a series of transpositions, so I got to get the term with the drag force and, and the applied force on the other side, but before that, I'm just going to do it one, one by one, just one step one step at a time. So, whoops. All right. This is acting real weird today. I don't know what's wrong with this. So, yes, that is 1 minus E raised to negative KT over M. Boom. So now, I just got to solve for V, where I got to remember the velocity is a function of time. So I'm just about to say V of T equals to the applied force, whoops, the wrong A, please don't do that on the exam, divided by constant, multiplied by whatever's on this side, E raised to negative KT over M. Boom. Now we just got to close the bracket, and we're good. So that is our function for the velocity Velocity is a function of time. And now, part E, on the axes below, sketch a graph of the speed we. All right, we just got to graph that function. And let me tell you, it's super easy. We well, Make sure to label your maximum, minima, and all of that. And when time t is zero, this equation right there tends to zero. Because one minus one is zero, as e raised to zero is just one. So that would be my starting point, zero. As time t approaches infinity, e raised to negative t tends to zero, and the velocity tends to the terminal velocity, that is the applied force over the positive constant. So this is going to look kind of like a square root graph, but a, it is really a dampened logarithmic graph. So, yeah, I'm just going to make it asymptotically approach. It's got to look a little smoother, smoother than that. Yep, right there. And now we are asymptotically going to approach a value. And that value, no prizes for guessing, is the terminal velocity. When the force on the object is just zero. That is the applied force over k, the positive constant. Well, that's it for today. I hope this helped, and I hope we had fun together. So, of course, just keep in mind, do your limits the right way, change your limits, and... Make sure to just follow all the directions the AP guys ask you for because they're all picky on it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Until next time.